In today's episode, you're going to meet a woman who is 78 years old and has the energy of somebody in their 20s or 30s. Before becoming a Food for Life instructor, Linda Middlesworth developed a healthy, low-fat, whole foods, vegan mentoring program. Her personal mission is to help people regain their health and well-being through nutrition education and by showing them how to lead a lifestyle of compassion to promote both healthful eating and animal advocacy. As the co-founder of V-Dog, which is a vegan dog food company. Linda is on a mission to change minds, change hearts, and help the animals to not suffer the way they have been. So you're in for a great treat today as we talk with Linda Middlesworth. So stick around. Are you ready to live the life you deserve? Do you want to feel vibrantly healthy and reach your optimal weight without dieting while being kind to animals and the planet? then you're in the right place at the right time. Get ready to hear from doctors, nutritionists, experts, and everyday men and women committed to creating a powerful life in mind, body, and soul through ethical food choices. Welcome to Plant-Based Eating for Health with your host, certified plant-based nutritionist, Kathleen Gage. Well, I cannot tell you how excited I am to be talking with my featured expert, guest, friend, all around amazing woman, Linda Middlesworth, who is just a rock star in the vegan and plant-based communities. Um, I heard about Linda quite some time ago, and I actually had the distinct pleasure, the honor, the good fortune of hanging out with her in Cleveland not too long ago. At um, We were at the uh, National Health Association Conference. We were at the We Did It Summit Conference, which was a certification for plant-based ambassadors. And I have to tell you, the first thing that I was actually actually blown away by Linda when I met you was is your age. Uh, when I heard that you are not even two years away from being 80, I was like, no way, that is impossible. And she was ready to pull out her driver's license to prove that it is true. But you've been a long time vegan, you're a plant based advocate. So let's start with you sharing um, a bit about yourself. How did you get involved in the whole vegan and plant based movement? Well, it started um, by my being very sick myself, you know, and I find a lot of people do find it that way because you want answers, and I didn't have answers. My doctor told me that I had, had this was um, 34 years ago, he told me I had severe heart disease. I mean, to the point of I could die at any moment. I had 358 cholesterol, I had um, high blood pressure, I had uh, cancer, I had thyroid cancer, and I had 50 pounds on me as an aerobic instructor. I had an extra, I was teaching 25 classes a week at that time, and I had 25 extra pounds, so I couldn't believe that I could be overweight. I never really admitted it to myself because I was doing all the aerobics and eating what I thought was good, healthy food. I thought eating chicken, and fish and cottage cheese and pineapple. Those were big health foods, I thought. And I didn't know at the time that they were hurting me, but I thought they were healthy food. And I had moved to a new neighborhood. And my then new neighbor, who uh, I still know today, she, I told her all my ills and all my ill health as we walked our dogs around the park. and. Um, I was almost crying it was so bad because I was very afraid. I was afraid of dying at any moment. And he, my doctor told me, you will die of heart disease before your cancer, Linda. I mean, it's that bad. So I told my new neighbor this, and she's a very smart lady, and she said, oh, oh, hey, that's no problem, Linda. I said, what's no problem? Your health. I said, why? And she said, well, just get a hold of uh, Dr. Mc John McDougall. And I said, who? Dr. Who? And she told me a little bit about him. And so I went down that day and bought his book. I didn't get a hold of him even. I just bought his book. I think it was called The 12 Day Program or something like that. And I read it from cover to cover. 
I couldn't put it down. And then I picked it up again and read it again. And I couldn't believe the examples he had in that book of people who started with things like I have, and even worse things like digestive disorders and Crohn's disease and all these horrible things. And they would start over here. He changed their food, just their food. That's it, nothing else. And they turned up over here as healthy, thriving people. And I thought, oh, this is what I want. And they did it with people with cancer. Now, cancer is a very hard one. Not everybody gets by that one. Uh, but mine was from eating the animal products. And so mine was, I was able to reverse mine. I was able to reverse my heart disease. I was able to reverse my high blood pressure and, and my obesity, 50 pounds, bye-bye. Just went away very quickly, by the way. Now I didn't start out perfectly, just like some of my own clients don't either. <laughs> I think I was eating uh, processed vegan food, no mm -hmm. oil because Dr. McDougall said no oil. So I didn't do the oil part. Although I may have cheated on some French fries now and again with oil, but I would have uh, processed vegan bologna, vegan hot dogs, processed breads, and uh, processed vegan cheeses. And at first my weight didn't come all the way off because of that, but it did very quickly right after. Uh, but I just, I thought, that's when I realized I need to go even further. So I went back and, and read Dr. McDougall again. I looked at his website. I found Dr. Mary, and uh, sorry, Mary, his wife's uh, recipes. And I used the recipes in his book. And then I got well. So it was just a wonderful thing. What, what year was that? Um, that was 34 years ago when I okay. was 44 years old. Okay, so you you started 34 years ago, and in that time, you fast forward to today, 2022, and now you're a force to be reckoned with within the vegan and plant-based community. It's like you're friends with Dr. McDougall. Uh, you hang out with people like Chef AJ, with uh, Coach Ruben, with, um, I'm trying to think of all the people that are just like in your, your close circle of influence and friends, and you're all just like rock stars that are changing the world. Now, you did something, and I, you know, I'm going to kind of swivel around here and go in a number of different directions, but you actually started a business uh, with your son um, where uh, it- my, my late husband. Okay. Okay. Tell us about V-Dog, which is vegan dog food. And I have to tell you, before you share about the company, whenever I mention to people about dogs being on a vegan diet, what do you think their first response is? I know you know what their first <laughs> yeah, response yeah. is. It's no, like, they no. don't believe it. They don't believe me at all. Um, but my late husband and I did a lot of research. He died, unfortunately, but my son was able to take over. So that was nice. But we started that uh, 17 years ago. It was my idea, by the way. Uh, and he thought it was a great idea. So he was kind of a salesman type. So he just jumped right on it. And he said, this is perfect. And we did a lot of nutritional research. We found out that modern dogs have I think it's 28 more MLAs than, than the old wolf used to have. And so they developed that over time, over evolution, being around, hanging around humans. And they've developed ability to, to uh, digest starch, which uh, is even more reason why they can be a plant-based dogs, you know. So it was uh, a wonderful thing because we've just been having a great time with the company. Uh, we have so many people whose dogs are healthy, like mine, who get the lab results back and find out that their lab reports, I just did both of my dogs, and their lab reports, their blood work is perfect. And I have one who's uh, about, I don't know, nine or 10, maybe eight, I don't know, we rescued him, so I'm not sure. And the other one's about three and both of them have perfect blood work. And it's just so nice to get that back. And then I tell my vet, you know, my dogs are vegan and they are shocked. I said, you're not vegan and you help animals. And they say, uh, no. And they kind of look down and 
they don't feel real good about it. And I finally had one of them. She was one of my nicer ones. She said, I just eat fish. That's the only thing I eat. And then I told her because I had to, you know, fish feel pain just like dogs do. Right, right. You know that they feel the same amount of pain we do and dogs do. And well, she said, you know, and, and with your dogs, you you have a blue nose, don't you? A blue nose. No, or a I have nose? a great big pit bull black and white mix. Okay, okay, because uh, I saw a picture of your pit, and he's beautiful. And we actually had a red nose pit who was a rescue. Oh. He was a bait dog. Uh, he's gone over the Rainbow Bridge, and now we have a pit shepherd mix who's a rescue. We yeah. only do rescues. We have horses. We have chickens. Oh, we have a cat. We have two dogs. You. And you know, I actually had people who said, "How can you have chickens and horses if you're vegan?" It's like how how can I not if we rescued them because we, we saved them from a horrendous life. Um, but I'm curious with, with animals. And I really want to spend a little time on this because animals are so important to me. And I actually, uh, for a period of time, I was working within the pet industry and the big shocker to me was I thought people in the pet industry would be at least vegetarian. And I was shocked at the number of people who aren't. And the response when they hear I'm vegan is, Oh, don't push that vegan stuff on me. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're in the pet industry, but don't push the vegan stuff. Okay. But let's talk about your healthy dogs and the diseases that have now become common in dogs and cats and horses and, you know, our domesticated animals. Um, it's pretty common for dogs to get liver problems, to get pancreati mm -hmm. pancreatitis, I, I would believe, um, to mm -hmm. get cancer. I know that. Oh, yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Why is that? Why is that? Why do, do most dogs get that? Yeah. Well, I say the pet food industry is even worse than it used to be. The I would hate to know exactly what's in the dog food, but you realize they um, they even feed cows fish for one thing. Um, cows eat more fish than humans do. Did you know that? No, and, I did they're not. They're vegetarians, so they're not getting the food that's correct for them at all. And so, and they give them, they give them a lot of antibiotics and different things to protect them from dying too soon. Otherwise they die and we they can't sell it, the meat that way. Mm -hmm. So the, the amount of uh, disgusting chemicals and, and uh, medicines they have to give to animals is probably worse than ever. So your, your dogs and cats, well, not dog, cat, I'm sorry, your dogs, get those chemicals too when you eat that terrible industry done pet food hmm. so i'm so glad i don't have to do that anymore that so how how would people find v dog um is it just vdog.com because i know i looked up the website you've got you know there's some phenomenal stuff on the site and yeah. what i was really oh, surprised of well, what I was really surprised and pleased with is the dog food is really not that much more in price than what you'll buy at the grocery store, which is garbage food. So mm -hmm. it's like garbage food or V-Dog. So how do people find V-Dog? Just uh, www.v-dog.com. Okay. So Google V-Dog, you'll find it. Okay. It'll perfect. Right up, but you can also buy it. Um, I prefer you buy it on our website, but you can buy it on Amazon or Chewy.com, and it's in a few stores, not too many. We're mostly online business. Okay, uh, okay. We have a few local stores here and a few in the Bay Area, in San Francisco area too, but mostly it's an online company. So that's the best place to find it. Wonderful, wonderful. And speaking of business, I know that, um, okay, you've been vegan for 34 years and you're a real advocate of people changing their lifestyle through healthy eating and the healthy eating of plant-based eating. And yesterday I was on TikTok and there was a woman that was saying how terrible plant-based eating is. It's the worst diet you can be on. And I'm like, well, she started with the vegan diet and it's like, <laughs> no, it's not a diet. Veganism is a lifestyle. Plant-based eating can be a diet. So how did you evolve from being 50 pounds overweight, having cancer, having high blood pressure? Basically, you were a, a walking time bomb with your health. And now you're a very, very healthy, almost, you know, I, I you're 78, but I love saying almost 80 because it's like you are a rock star. And I, I mean that sincerely. I tell people about you all the time. But how did you move into being a vegan mentor? Well, that came 
pretty fast afterwards because after I fixed my own health, I figured everybody would want to have this happen. And I kept, you know, most of my friends had problems and most of my family have problems today. So I thought, wow, I can help people. So I decided to start Vegan Mentor and I, because it's not about money for me, I charge almost nothing for, for my services because it's, I love helping people. It is a delight to help people. When you see them change over like I did from whatever their unhealthy lifestyle was giving them to this completely healthy lifestyle, I have one client who cries when he sees me because he had digestive disorders for 30 years and now he's free of all of his digestive disorders. I have people who used to be 150 pounds heavier and now they're the correct body weight because, you know, really, um, people really do want to feel good. They don't want to feel sick. They don't want to feel tired. They don't, they want to have energy and vitality. I feel like, I don't know, maybe I'm 25 or something. I just don't feel very old and I want everybody to feel that good. So, and like Dr. McDougall always says, people like to look good and feel good. And unfortunately we've accepted being in this country anyway, being quite overweight. Mm -hmm. So many people are, I don't know what the ratio is, but it's pretty high because when I look around in the grocery store or wherever I am, there are so many people who, are walking by that meat and cheese aisle and picking it out and I want to grab their hand and push it back down. I can't. I don't. But I want to and then I want to tell them all about it. But until the meat and cheese and dairy aisle is gone, the egg aisle, I am not going to be happy. I have to have this gone. Well, but how, how, how do you and, and how do you think we can educate people? Because seriously, I, I actually did an article recently about the um, food industry advertising. It's a $14 billion a year uh, industry, just the advertising within the United States. And you compare that to the size of the vegan market. It, wow. it The vegan market pales in comparison, and we don't spend a lot of money on advertising. It's mostly word of mouth. And the article was what advertisers don't want you to know and how people have this perception that we as vegans are constantly pushing our lifestyle on people. And if you yeah. look at it, how much brainwashing goes on within the wow. meat and dairy industry, but actually by 2030, this is shocking. 2030 over 50% of the population will be obese and overweight. That is shocking because with that comes diabetes, with it comes cancer, with it comes high blood pressure and the number of kids nowadays. So I'm on a mission and I'm on a mission to uh, bring people like yourself onto the show so you can educate people. And hopefully it catches with more than just one person that we catch with a lot of people. But what do you think it's going to take for people to really understand when they say, oh, the climate, it's changing and, and we're at a critical time, we have to do something as they're eating their hamburger with bacon and cheese on it? What can we do to educate people? Because it, it just boggles my mind that on the one hand, they want to do something and on the other hand, don't want to be inconvenienced. Well, it's time that we inconvenience people. So that's my soapbox for right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, the problem is uh, the meat and dairy and egg industry and the fishing industry are very powerful. They have a lot of hands in our government control. And so until we change that, it's going to be very difficult to make our movement move faster. But we have people like um, Dr. Richard Openlander writing books about food choices and sustainability and uncomfortably unaware. And we have Glenn Mercer watch, uh, writing food is climate. So writing of 80, and we found out from Dr. Salish Rao, that 87% of our greenhouse gases are coming from animal agriculture. And then what a lot of people don't know is that our food choices are the best choices, but because of advertising, like you said, the control over advertising, people don't know it. The first question they ask you is, where do you get your protein every time? Absolutely. I mean, every time. I don't get a different question. That is the question. So we're obsessed with protein and we need, we don't need that much protein, number one. And we get, we can get, actually you can get too much protein on plants 
if you do it wrong. So plants are not lacking in protein and, and it has the good protein, the non-heme protein. The heme protein is like in meat, especially if you cook the meat. These are the, these chemicals called heterocyclic amines, which actually cause you to get cancer and to get very sick. Uh, because when you cook it, it becomes highly toxic, even more toxic. And people usually don't eat their meat raw. And um, even so, even if they ate it raw, it would have too much saturated fat in it and would make people sick and fat. Right. So sick and fat is what's happening in the world today. And But when you can get $1 million for one tuna fish, that industry is for tuna is just still great because they're getting so much money. It's the money right. and the and the control by the governments and the advertising that we have to really work on. You know, and and what's so frustrating is this whole thing around body shaming that people think if you talk about people being overweight that your body shaming yeah. has nothing to do with body shaming because when I was a carnivore and I actually was one of those people that the rarer the meat the more I liked it I I'm embarrassed <laughs> to admit it but you know that I was raised with a European mother who you know that was kind of a delicacy and we would eat our s cargo all that crazy stuff oh, but wow. yeah yeah crazy crazy and and the thing is is that I was about 50 pounds heavier than I am now. I was sluggish. I was I was fat and I was actually obese. I was right on that borderline of being obese. So beautiful. And yeah. And, it, and my doctor even told me, she said, you better get your weight under control. You better do something and do it faster. We're putting you on medication. And she knows how I feel about meds because I'm in recovery. So I don't like to put anything like that in my body. And when I went plant-based, contrary to what I hear from other people, my doctor actually high-fived me. My doctor was so <laughs> cool. And she was like, I'm so happy that you found this way of life. And she introduced me to some people that worked at Oregon Medical Group that were plant-based advocates. So when when people grab onto that whole thing of body shaming, how do you address that? Let's say with your clients that you you know that them losing weight is not necessarily just about the physical, but it really is about the diseases that they get with it. So I guess that would be physical. How do you address that, Linda? Well, and, and before you answer that, I want to remind people that you're listening to the Plant-Based Eating for Health show. This is Kathleen Gage, your host. And I have the good fortune of talking with my friend, Linda Middlesworth, who is with v-dog.com, v-dog.com. Check it out for your pets. And uh -huh. she's also with veganmentor.com. So I, I want you to check out those websites. We'll put it in the show notes. So Linda, how do you address that with the people who say body shaming? Well, I tell people, I said, do you want to feel good? That is the goal here. It's not about your being fat. I have friends who are overweight. I love them dearly. I doesn't, my feelings for people just because they're overweight doesn't make me not like them or something. I don't, uh, would never shame anyone. But what I tell my friends who are interested or somehow find out how I did it and they want to know how to do it too. I tell them that having excess fat on us is unhealthy because it causes excess estrogen to grow in our bodies and excess testosterone and estrogen in men. You know when men get those man boobs that come out? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's from excess estrogen in them. And so when they're running and they look like they need a bra, that means they're eating animal. I always know who's eating animal products. Wow. I look at them in a tight t-shirt, I know. You're on cheese and eggs and dairy or something or meat, and because that excess estrogen you're get, uh, forming in your body is actually hurting you, and that excess estrogen actually goes into changing DNA, and that's when you get your cancer going. So we really have to avoid that completely. Um, any animal products at all, mm -hmm. any animal product at all, will increase the estrogen and testosterone, and it also es excess estrogen is good for the like uh, prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, um, breast cancer, all those hormonal cancers. So that's what happens when you eat those animal products, especially so, the dairy. Dairy's number one for that, by the way. Absolutely. And the it most powerful carcinogen, I tell everybody that. And everybody's shocked. They always think it's red beef meat. Right, right. 
or cigarette smoking or something like that. But, you know, and, and it's amazing when you inform people of this and in addition to, well, how do you get your protein? They say, oh, I could never do that. And it's like, well, it's not that you could never do it. You choose not to. It's like life is about choices. And when somebody comes to you and they say, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to make changes. They, maybe they've been to one of your, your workshops and you do workshops in the Sacramento area. You're part of the vegan, or you actually are the founder of the Sacramento Vegan Society, as far as I know. Yes. Am I correct? Tell us about that. Well, I started that, um, I think in 2008, if I recall, and it has just grown. Every day I get two, three, four, five new members, and they just find us somehow. I don't even know how they find us, but it is growing like crazy, and we put all kinds of things like uh, workshops. Um, Mm -hmm. I I teach my Food for Life classes in there, too, as well. I, I work for Dr. Neil Bernard as a food for life instructor. I teach cancer and diabetes classes mostly there. And I teach at the local colleges. So I always announce uh, those classes on there, but we have Ruben Gonzalez teaches his Mm -hmm. classes on there. He's a local with me, he's fabulous. And then we have dine outs. We go to, uh, like we have a new restaurant now that's actually oil, salt and sugar free, if you can believe it. A vegan restaurant. So where's that located? Is that yeah. in Fair Oaks or is it in Sacramento? Oh, it's more like in oh, West Sacramento. But okay, it is absolutely fabulous. So um, it just came to town and got a big write up. But you can go there, the nicest people too, and you can get all this wonderful tasting food without all the harmful anything in it. Oh, that's I mean, awesome! Something like I would make at home. So it's <clears throat> absolutely great. But um, what else were we talking about? Let's see. Well, you know, I'm curious about the onboarding process you have for, for clients. You said you don't charge a lot because it's not really about the money for you. So what could somebody expect in working with you? Do you only work one-on-one in person or do you work virtually? Uh, how does that all happen? And well, what's your onboarding process? Okay. Okay. Um, People find me on my uh, meetup a lot. That's where I get most of my clients to come over. And before COVID, I would take them grocery shopping. I'd have a group of like eight to 10 people a month. And I'd take me to, uh, right before the first of the month, we would meet at the grocery store. And I'd go down the aisle. i say, you can have this, not that, this, not that. And they really appreciated that. And then I had a list also to give them. But... I have, uh, I have two tracks for those people when they get onto my vegan mentor program. There's a fast track and a slower track. Both of them are completely vegan and oil free. Okay. But one of them is more uh, a faster track for weight loss. So sometimes people, when they really, really want to get it off in a hurry, I'll put them on fast track, which is more like uh, John McDougall's program. Mm-hmm. And then the slower track is still John McDougall's program, but they're allowed to eat a little more of a little less strict. So they have more choices. They have less choices on the fast track. And again, how would they get in touch with you to, uh, and and do you do it virtually? So if somebody, let's say, uh, is listening to this and they're in New York or they're in the UK, can they work with you? Oh yeah. We do a phone call usually. At the beginning, and then you also email me what your goals are. You okay. tell me what your goals are. I do like people to tell me their age and their weight and their height so I can see how they're doing really. And then every day, I didn't do this before, but now I have, have people weigh themselves every morning. I'm finding it, I used to think that's too much, but no, I like it a lot because it makes you think about getting on the scale and they think about the food they're about to eat and then they think I have to get on the scale tomorrow and so it's really helpful uh, when when we do that I'm finding that to be a great asset but they find me they can find me on my website but they also find me um, at my veganmentor.com gmail address okay go ahead and give that if you'd like okay Um, uh, veganmentor at gmail.com Okay. Veganmentor at gmail.com. And the Uh website is veganmentor.com. Am I correct? Yeah. 
You're right. Okay. So I'm going grocery shopping later today and I, I'm pretty aware of what I put into my cart and not everybody in my family is vegan. So we have a rule that when I go grocery shopping, I'm not buying your meat. I'm not buying your ice cream. I'm not buying your stuff. If you want that, you go get it yourself, but please don't cook meat in the house. I mean, we're, <laughs> you know, and I get a lot of respect for that. I really do. But let's say that I'm brand new to shopping at the grocery store and I really don't know how to um, move around around the store. Uh, what would you recommend for somebody who's brand new that really is looking to improve their health? I have a list. I have a, um, a, a 30 day vegan health watch list. And on the list, it shows you the products that we recommend and try to stick with those. And if they want something to ask me first, if they don't know if it's okay, and they're not sure, they just have to email me or text me even, just text me. Some people text me in the grocery store and they even take a picture of it. Can I have this? And I said, did you read the ingredients? The ingredients, you never believe anything, like Jeff Novick, I think he says, never believe anything on the front of a package. Right, and if it's healthy, package, nutritious, uh, you know, oh, fat free. It's like, yeah. okay, oh, okay. No, no, and they always add things like, for instance, some of the soy milks and the uh, almond milks and things like that in the store, some of them are terrible for you. Why? Because in the ingredient list, like I forgot the name of it now, silk, silk soy milk. If you look in the ingredient list, it says vitamin A palmitate. Doesn't that sound like a vitamin? It's not. It's palm oil. Oh, no, my I don't allow God. My oh, my gosh. To get those uh, because they're eating palm oil. And I said, you're not only hurting yourself, you're hurting the orangutans. Absolutely. So Absolutely. We don't want that one. So I give a list, and sometimes I say why on the list. But a lot of times um, I talk about that with them before they start, too. We go over the list together and we find out what foods are acceptable and which are not. So. The grocery store, I'm COVID going down a little bit. I might start that again because it's really helpful going down the aisle. I, you know, I, I love that. And I would love to see you start a TikTok channel where you actually go to the grocery store because TikTok is a great way to reach your market. And and people turn to TikTok now I've to really be educated. Yeah. It's it's phenomenal. I, I oh. have friends that are using it. I, I use it. I may, I basically do it when I go on a run and I have a profound thought or I think it's a profound thought, but I'll shoot a short video and you do one and two minute videos and that's it. And you just put it up and people look for that kind of information. Speaking of which right now we're, we're dealing with a lot of inflation. People are really struggling with their, their grocery budget. And I mean, this is a real struggle and yet if they eat a certain way plant-based, they can save money. So what would be some of your tips to people who are on a tight budget and they want to eat healthy and they just don't know what to do? They've been buying all the processed garbage and they think, you know, vegan processed food is okay. It's processed. So what's your recommendation, Coach Linda? Uh, the, first on thing, I, I, the first thing I would say is I love Ellen Jaffe Jones' uh, eat vegan or go vegan on $4 a day. Yes, yes. I love her to pieces. She's a super athlete and a half. I mean, she's getting old like me and she's still an athlete like crazy. So, um, but what I tell people is to not buy packaged food. That's right. number one. Don't buy it in a package. And unless, you know, I, I try to help people learn how to make it from scratch. Some people don't physically have the time. So then I tell them the best, least um least terrible ingredients for a package i i tell them which what those are in my list i give them so they always have that but yeah no i um tell them to eat from the produce aisle you know from fresh food not even the canned food if they can not again not everybody has time to cook their beans in their instant pot some people don't have an instant pot but just um buy cans and read the label because they even put extra things they put extra things in just about everything so like i had my partner pick up uh me rancho corn tortillas because they're just uh corn and lime or something just mm -hmm. perfect 
Well, he brought me Rancho back, but that particular type had a, said artisan on it, and it had like a list of chemicals in there. Oh my goodness! So, what? And so I had to throw it in the garbage because we had opened it and everything, and and so. Anyway, there's they trick you all the time, so you just have to be very aware. Absolutely, and there's the book Diet for a New America, where John yeah. Robbins uh, he talks that's a lot about too. that. And there's the yeah. Salt Sugar Fat book by Michael Moss that's phenomenal. Yeah. And Ellen has been on my show. I adore Ellen. She's a runner, and I am nowhere near the runner she is. I mean, she's got I don't oh. know how many medals. I have a few, but nothing like what she nice. has. So I aspire to be like her. You know, I yeah, aspire to be like no. you and I. So I hear one too. She really is. She really is. And I want to remind people that you're listening to the Plant-Based Eating for Health show. I'm your host, Kathleen Gage, and I'm talking with the one of the founders of V Dog, which is v-dog.com. V is in vegan hyphen dog.com go there check out the food for your dog and get your dog healthy on a vegan diet and when people say it can't be done just take a look at some of the testimonials and the stories and you'll see that yes it can be done and your dog will be with you a lot longer and also go to the vegan mentor.com that's vegan mentor.com and you'll be able to find out all about linda and linda i want to kind of sidetrack here into your advocacy work because i know you are a phenomenally passionate woman around the animals and being an advocate for the animals and, you know, having people wake up beyond just their health, but the health of the animals, the health of the environment. Um, when did you first start getting uh, so passionate and so involved in um, advocacy for the animals? It actually started 34 years ago. Okay. Exactly when I started working on my health at the same time, it happened because of my then new neighbor. First week she said, Oh, you can get rid of your cancer, your heart disease, your uh, high cholesterol, your blood pressure. Uh, you should be able to get rid of all that with Dr. John McDougall. So that was the, f the first week. The second week, we're walking our dogs around the park again. And, and she said, by the way, you know what happens to dairy cows, don't you? And I said, no, but I love cheese. I said, because, you know, I was brand new. I'd already been a week as a vegan uh, going plant-based for my health. And then she explained to me, which I won't go into what happens to dairy cows, but it was so horrible. I stopped. We had to stop walking because I was so shocked that I didn't know that I was 44 years old into health and nutrition and teaching aerobics and all kinds of stuff, doing my graphic design business I did for 20 years, mm -hmm. 25 years. And I had no idea that this was happening to the animals and that the milk didn't belong to us, it belonged to the baby cow. And what they did to the cows uh, to give us their milk was so shocking to me, mostly because I thought, how can I be an adult and not even think about where our meat and cheese and eggs come from? Because then she told me about the rest of it, the rest of more walks and more information. And I was, of course, then I read Peter Singer, Animal Liberation, I read uh, Food, Revolution, Food Revolution, John Robbins, and of course, Dr. McDougall. I read all his books, but I found out that everything we were been doing for animals, eating them, using them for entertainment, uh, for circuses and sea world, using them and racehorsing and it just it just went on and on and it never dawned on me before because we're we're taught as children this is fun for the animals or something we kind of think they're having a good time right. like we are when we watch them and so i was i was just in shock and that's when it began right then i be, i started um i started doing animal advocacy with different groups mm -hmm. and then i have my own now so what is your animal advocacy well, group? Sacramento Animal Save. Okay. I, I, I'm friends with the leader of the Save Movement. And I work with DXC now too, Direct Action Everywhere. Okay. They're based uh, in Berkeley, but they have two, their leader and his assistant got arrested for rescuing two very small dark brown pigs that were very sick just born in a 
the biggest slaughterhouse in the country, I think, a Smithfield. Mm -hmm. and they went in and rescued two little piglets. And now they're, uh, I think it's this week, in jail. They're going to go to prison. He lost his lost license. Um, they're going to go to prison, most likely, for having stolen these little babies. Oh, my gosh. Slaughterhouse. That so, is incredible. Yeah. So I get in. I'm very close to them, too. And I work with every... Um, every organization that deals with animals and i work on i write letters uh for act animal for action of uh, action for animals sorry mm -hmm. and with eric mills he i write letters just about every day talking to the about the rodeo on the newspaper right. or talking about horse racing or um just different abuses of animals elephant abuse right name it so I can't stop with that because I feel like I have to fight for them. Right. I have to do what I can. I have to help people understand what's going on. And I don't try to be mean about it. I try to do it in a nice way. If right. somebody asks me, why are you vegan? I try to be very nice about it because I know how shocked I was. Right. So they have no idea what's going on. So, you know, you're right. Most people don't have any idea. And then there are those that they say, oh, I can't watch that because if I do, I'll have to make a change. It's like, that's the idea. And it really is, I believe, about those of us who are willing to step forward and do what we can. Um, it, it's about continuing that process. And then when people are ready, bringing them along, because when we did the summit and the certification program in Cleveland, that was the whole idea behind the certification program was to educate people so that they can have better communication skills and not try to force people Unless it, it, you know, if we're seeing an animal be abused, yeah, we're going to stop it. We're going to do something right there and then. But a lot of change happens through conversations and through shows like this. Um, that's one reason I do my show. I want to bring people like yourself to my community so that you can share your wisdom and hopefully it impacts them in a great way. And then they go out and do their advocacy work. So Linda, in, in closing, what are your final thoughts for people? And is there anything I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? No, you asked everything perfectly, but I would just say that um, if you're just hearing this information for the first time, please feel free to get a hold of me and I will very gently tell you how it goes and how you can help too. Because I know you might be in shock as well if you think everything's been fine so far. And even if you're struggling, if you're struggling to make the change, to make the switch, I'm very patient. Sometimes I don't do it right away with people they're not ready. I wait till you're ready, and when you say, okay, I want to try now, is when we do it. There are some people who never change. That's okay, too. But if you're willing to even listen and try to find out how you might be able to help, if you want to help your health, I love doing that. It makes me so happy. I just helped a lady and her son. They were sitting at the park. And I had my dog who I was get, getting out of the car and they love pit bulls. So we had this long conversation and, and she was quite overweight and her son was saw my vegan shirt and said, ah, oh, I'd never do that in a million years. I love my meat. And I said, oh, okay, I understand. And I, you know, you have to just be very patient with people. Right. Well, before I left, I said, listen, if you ever want any help with your health, just let me know. In fact, here's my card, because that's what I do. I help people. And it was I love this when it happens, and it did happen. What happened is I, I yelled out the window, and watch uh, What the Health. Watch What the Health on, on, on Netflix. You have Netflix? She said, yep, right here, see? I said, okay, watch that. Well, that night, I crawled into bed, take a look at my people, and this lady wrote to me, she says, Linda, I watched the movie twice. I want to do this. Right. On. I, I knew I shouldn't be giving meat to my son. I knew I shouldn't be. And she's so excited about doing this. So, you know, just a mention in a nice way. If you ever need help with your health, you know, didn't it didn't bother her at all. She took my card. 
she, she said, no, 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 I would have just walked away, but she did take my card. And this happens with me a lot, actually. I love it. I, I don't even charge people when I meet them like that. They didn't come to me. I went to her, so right. I don't charge. And uh, they didn't seem like they had a lot of money anyway. Uh, but I was so happy to help, and I love doing that. And I think that if you really want to try it all, I will be very patient with you. I will help you find ways to get over the things you're addicted to. Because I make, uh, just like they had at National Health Association, they had these, I couldn't believe it, they have these brownies, Mexican brownies there. I think I ate all of them. I don't know. Uh, no, I think I did. I took, I, I, I'm going to make a confession. I actually took a plate and took it up to my room and it was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to indulge later. And I felt so guilty. And it was like, I actually lost weight while I was at NHA. Yeah. I could not believe it. I lost three pounds. I'm like, how did that happen? Well, I walked around a lot and I was trying to keep up with you. I mean, my <laughs> gosh, it was crazy. But well, I, I love, I love what you're doing. I am so thrilled that we have finally connected and i look forward to coming down to the sacramento area because I as i mentioned my you. my folks used to live in that area in citrus heights yeah. and um they both have passed away and both dealt with health issues i mean you know no disputing that but um i look forward to coming down and hanging out with you and all of your buddies and going to one of your vegan society meetings and gosh i mean just having a great time and going and checking out that new restaurant in, oh, in yeah. sacramento yeah, We're going I, every other Thursday there, just so you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'll make sure to be there on a Thursday and every yeah. other Thursday. And I want to thank everybody for listening in. And this is Kathleen Gage with the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show. I've been talking with Linda Middlesworth, who is just a phenomenal, phenomenal example of what happens when you live a healthy plant-based vegan lifestyle. Linda, this has been delightful. I so appreciate all you're doing and I wish you much, much success. Have Thank a great day. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for your commitment to an ethical life through plant-based food choices. The kind of choices that are kind to your body, the environment, and most of all, animals. Be sure to leave a review and rating of the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show.